and I should perhaps welcome you with the words, Peace be with you, because that is the traditional greeting of a bishop to his people, and peace is the theme for the fourth week of Advent. The traditional greeting of the kiss of peace occurs in apostolic writings and liturgies, and we're going to hear the end of the first letter of St Peter. 1 Peter, chapter 5, verses 6 to 14. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Be alert and sober of mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. Final greetings. With the help of Silas, whom I regard as a faithful brother, I have written to you briefly, encouraging you and testifying that this is the true grace of God. Stand fast in it. She who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you her greetings, and so does my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. The kiss of peace, given and exchanged at the Eucharist, is an ancient custom, first mentioned by St Justin Martyr in the second century. At the Eucharist, those preparing for baptism and confirmation would be present for the first half for the liturgy of the word, and then be dismissed before the ministry of the sacrament. Those who remained and who would receive Holy Communion together were then invited to exchange the kiss of peace, to show that they were united in love with one another. In the 1662 Book of Common Prayer, the invitation says, You that are in love and charity with your neighbours, draw near with faith. And the people would move from their seats forward to be able to stand around the altar as the communion was celebrated. Today the kiss of peace has been replaced with a handshake, although during the pandemic we've not been able to do that, and so we tend to look towards one another and greet one another with a, with a bow or a smile behind a mask or hands put together in prayer. This is of course a formal liturgical act, symbolising that we are united as God's people, but peace is much more than a liturgical act. Firstly, it's about being at peace with God and feeling his love and forgiveness deep within our hearts. It's why confession is so important, whether you do it privately, corporately in church, or sacramentally to a priest. We are all sinners in needs of God's love, and he is never more than a prayer away. St Augustine said, Our hearts are restless until they find their rest in God. In other words, we shall not find peace until we find God and experience his forgiveness. Self-examination is painful because it reminds us that we're not the nice people that we want to be. We have to admit that to ourselves and to God, who is always slow to judge but quick to forgive. Forgiveness is what brings about peace. That's also true if we're not at peace with a relative, a friend or neighbour or colleague. It's amazing how many people and sometimes whole families are at enmity with one another. And it takes a brave person, a courageous person, to be the first to reach out and offer an olive branch. In Hebrew, the common greeting, shalom, means much more than just peace. It means, I want the very best for you. It means, may God's blessing and God's will be done in you. 
Judas greeted Jesus with a kiss and landed the first wound of the Passion. We are told not to cry, peace, peace, when there is no peace, because there can be no peace without justice. Peace and justice are two sides of the same coin, and those who feel bullied, discriminated against or abused often seek justice as a way of finding peace for themselves. We need peace with God, peace with one another, and also peace with ourselves. Pope Francis wrote, Rivers do not drink their own waters, trees do not eat their own fruit, the sun does not shine on itself, and flowers do not spread their fragrance for themselves. Living for others is a rule of nature. We are all born to help each other. No matter how difficult it is, life is good when you are happy, but much better when others are happy because of you. The Christmas message of peace, brought by the angels, wished peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Our inner peace comes about when we, women and men, can relate to God and other people and can forgive earth for not being heaven. So let us pray that we may be peacemakers and not just peace lovers. Let us pray for the peace of the world and an end to war, fighting, discrimination and hatred. Let us pray for unity among families and nations. Let us pray for the peace of God which passes all understanding. And may we have peace in our own hearts. Lord Jesus Christ, you often said to your apostles, Peace and be not afraid. Be with us as we work for peace. Peace among nations, peace in our country, peace in our own community and peace in our hearts. Unite the divided, reconcile those in dispute, heal the wounded, hold back the quarrelsome, liberate the oppressed and give us peace for your name's sake. Amen. May the joy of the angels, the love of the shepherds, the hope of the wise men, the obedience of Mary and Joseph, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.